A groundbreaking IVF technique involving three people has resulted in the births of eight babies free from what can be devastating diseases. Scientists in Newcastle have pioneered the technique to stop mothers passing down a mutation in their DNA that can cause mitochondrial disease, which commonly impacts major organs such as the heart and the brain. These children will not suffer from mitochondrial disease. They will not be dying in infancy or in early childhood. They will not be going into be adults with severe muscle disease and respiratory failure. So how does it work? If a mother's egg has unhealthy mitochondria, scientists take a healthy egg from a donor. They then remove the nucleus from the donor egg and replace it with the nucleus from the mother's egg. This is then fertilised with the father's sperm. Overall, just 0.1% of the baby's DNA comes from the donor. It's necessary to provide energy for the cell but it doesn't contribute to the characteristics. We've obviously got the nuclear DNA, which is from the mum and dad, and that provides all the characteristics in terms of eye colour, hair colour, the baby's identity. The babies, four girls and four boys, remain anonymous, but we know seven of them are under two years old. The mother of one said she's overwhelmed with gratitude. Another said the breakthrough has lifted what was a heavy cloud of fear. So you've come to discuss some of your reproductive options. I have, that, yes. That right? For people like Chloe Russell, who carry the DNA mutation that can cause mitochondrial disease, it opens up a brighter future. Knowing that I can go through this procedure, especially for the mitochondrial donation, knowing that I can go down this route and have healthy children is, is incredible. Every year, around one in 5,000 children in the UK is born with mitochondrial DNA mutations. Scientists will continue to monitor the eight babies born through this new technique and say their progress so far gives grounds for optimism. Faye Barker, ITV News. Well, I'm pleased to be joined this afternoon by Liz Curtis, who, who founded the Lilly Foundation, which is the UK's leading charity, isn't it, Liz? dedicated to fighting incurable mitochondrial disease. Now, you set up this charity after your little girl, Lily, died of the condition when she was just eight months old. Now, you, she might have only been in your life for, for a short time, but just tell us a little bit about Lily. So, Lily was our third daughter, um, and she was diagnosed with a mitochondrial disease when she was just seven weeks old. Um, that followed a number of seizures where she had a couple of cardiac arrests, um, which ended up with her being in intensive care in London um, and put on life support. And it was during this time that we started to talk about mitochondrial disease and the implications of that. Um, and after about five days where doctors had done all the tests that they could possibly do, um, and we were told that the results of these tests would be unlikely to come back in Lily's lifetime um, because they didn't think that she would survive once uh, life support was withdrawn. So we decided the time had come to, to take her off and do that dreaded thing of switching off the machine. Um, and um, our friends and family all came to say goodbye, but Lily had slightly different ideas and she, <laughs> and she didn't pass away straight away and we were able to take her home and have a bit of time with her. We had two older daughters, um, so we had a bit of family time with her and just the opportunity mm -hmm. to enjoy her, but also, and possibly really importantly, learn a little bit about mitochondrial disease and just how little information was available for parents like us and support um, in terms of just supporting us through our journey. When you heard about these eight babies, healthy eight babies, what was your instinctive reaction to this news? Oh, it, it was... Relief in one way, because, we, you know, we, we, we fought hard for this to happen um, back in 2015, but there was never a guarantee that this was going to work in, in humans. Um, and it was always very much, you know, a, a research project. Um, so when we learned that eight babies had been born healthy and free of the disease, it was just, it's just amazing news. And we don't often get much to celebrate in our mitochondrial community. You know, I think we have to remember it's a disease for which there's no cure and there's no treatment. It's progressive, it's degenerative. And um, those who are affected can be affected in some really nasty, horrible ways and it has a huge impact on life. So, you know, we were, we were it, yeah, it was, Brilliant, yes. Now, Les, I do have to say that despite this success, this procedure is considered quite controversial, 
Those against it have ethical concerns, the, the, the notion of we're creating designer babies. What would you say to those people? I'd say it couldn't probably be further than the truth than design, a designer baby. Um, of course, you know, at the time, the, these, these ethical um, considerations were discussed at length and we you know we were involved as a charity in a number of public consultations which involved members of the public ethicists um, doctors clinicians scientists patients parents and it, the, all of these dis were discussed at length and to see whether or not this was ethically viable and ethically sound and the decision was made that it was and it was a, a vote in parliament and in the house of lords it was a free vote so it was a conscience vote so it was something that we don't see every day and it was over uh, overwhelming you know we had an overwhelming yes and so we're here and yes there'll always be people that maybe don't agree but and it is a definite yes from you. Thank you. It Thank you indeed. very much. Thank you.